welcome back friends welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's biology I've got this request many times to make a video on Lotka Volterra model this is a type of topic that we have in uh, the environmental biology and ecology and uh, basically for CSIR UGC net exam they used to ask question from this region okay so let's talk about Lotka Volterra model now the first thing is what this Lotka Volterra model is Lotka Volterra model provides us information about competition between two species living in the same ecosystem. To understand Lotka Volterra model, you need to know some basic things about ecology, some basic facts about ecology. The thing is, now while two species are living in the same habitat, they share some resources. They may share their food resources, they may also share their food habits. Now the question is, there is a difference between the term habitat and the term ecological niche. Habitat is the place where an organism lives. That concludes with the abiotic factors in that habitat, okay, in that place. While niche, so let me write them, habitat and niche. While ecological niche, this says it will be the abiotic factor the food source and habit of the organism all together is a part of the niche so niche is much more accurate much more specific compared to the habitat which is only consisting of abiotic factors and the biotic elements living there okay now the question is if you consider this idea of niche, that means an organism's functional role in the ecosystem that concludes the abiotic factor, the food that organism eats, right? And the other organism who eats this organism, right? So if you're considering niche of mine, that will be all the region that I live, right? What I eat, what eats me, and also my behavior. All those things together will be known as a functional role of mine in that specific region that will be my niche so <clears throat> if we consider niche no two species can coexist in the same niche without ending up in competition so if two species share same niche then they should end it up in competition that's the idea known as competitive exclusion principle okay or gauss hypothesis this competitive exclusion principle said that if the niche is same between two species they will end up in competition so the result for the competition will be either so the result so competition will rise and the result of the competition will be one thing win or loss or on the other hand it can be the partitioning so between these two species if the competition arises one species will win one will lose okay so the species win will live there the species loses will be locally extinct on the other hand <coughs> partitioning is a way of both the species living belonging to the same niche together in the same habitat but limiting their resources that one species let's say species a uh, let's say both of them are bird species living in the same region of the plant uh, same type of plants and eating same food so they decide to live in two separate regions of the plant and eating different types of food one of the bird is eating only the fruit another one is eating the seed by this separation of their food habits, they can separate from their niche. So they can form two separate realized niche that can prevent their competition. Okay, That is the term. So once you know this idea, we are much interested here to talk about the first situation when two species are competing against each other. So one will win, one will lose. Whenever two species are competing against each other, then how 
can we predict the outcome of that competition and load curve volterra model a load curve volterra theory is going to help us predicting the outcome of a competition based on the impact of one species on another that's what load curve volterra model is all about right so now let's look at here with an example we start with species x and species y so both the species are living in the same region they are ending up in competition maybe that they share niche same niche that's why they end up in competition then what we will see x will have some impact on y y also have some impact on x now the impact exerted by x on y and y on x is known as a competition coefficient that is known as alpha okay value known as alpha we call it species 1 and this is let's say species 2 x is species 1 and y is species 2 in our calculation so what we can say whenever x is present along with y x exerting some competition to y and that is known as alpha but here what we are seeing 1 exerting the effect on 2 so the value for alpha will be 2 1 alpha 21 Alpha 21 means the amount of competition exerted by species 1 on species 2. While the other one, the amount of competition exerted by species 2 on species 1 will be known as alpha 12. That means competition of 2 on 1. So that's how we get two values. One is known as alpha 12, another one is known as alpha 21. Alpha 12 means the competition of species 2 on 1, alpha 21, competition exerted by species 1 on 2. So now once you know this fact, try to analyze one simple thing. If we are trying to know the population growth of species 2, then we also need to count the species, the, the population of the species 1 or species X. Why? Because if species 1 the size of the population of species 1 if it's more then the growth of species 2 will be less due to the competition right similarly <clears throat> if we are counting the species and the population growth of species 1 the population size of species 2 also matters so now we know according to the formula we can calculate the growth of a population or intrinsic we can calculate the growth rate of a population right now if we imagine this growth rate of a population get get to know dn by dt equals to r n this is the formula for calculating the growth of a population right the total number increasing over time and that will be r n n is the initial initial number of individual of the population right and r is the intrinsic growth rate okay this is the difference dn by dt equals r n now intrinsic growth rate means it is dependent on birth rate and death rate so more birth rate less death rate r value will increase okay so now this is the formula for calculating rapid growth or exponential growth that's what we know okay this is a general formula till this point let me separate it here it's a general formula of calculating now if we do that actually in reality we know that there is a factor known as carrying capacity that means an environment's ultimate resource that can support the length of a population right the carrying capacity is the total number of individual a specific ecosystem can support for its growth. So that is known as K. The value is known as K. So once we take account for the K, we get much accurate. We get much accurate growth rate. So in that case, the value will be dn by dt equals to R n. Then what we get? K minus n by k this 
is going to give you more accurate data based on real situations of the wild because here we take account for the carrying capacity as well this is going to give us a graph this is known as logistic growth which is actually how populations grow because in the earlier one this is going to give us a exponential growth so you will see the growth like this while this one will give you a growth pattern like this logistic growth gives you a s-shaped curve and that's kind of reality in nature but still till this point it's fine to calculate the population growth of one species but if that species is in competition with another species in that environment then how we can calculate the growth of that species then this two formula will not be enough to calculate in that case we need to use the idea of lotka volterra model that is if we are calculating for one species which is in competition with other we need to also take account the population size of that other species and many other factors we call it predator prey model why we call it predator prey model because in this competition we know one of the species will win who is more impactful that will be known as a predator while the other one will lose less impactful known as the prey that is the idea so once we check the total number of predator and prey in the population then we can tell what is going to be the outcome and what is what will be the growth rate of either predator or prey in the environment so for that to calculate we need to tweak this equation a little bit and the change that we need to bring is now dn by dt equals to now let's say here we are calculating the growth for species 1 okay in presence of species 2 so if you are calculating the growth of species 1 let's say the total number of individual present at the beginning of species 1 is n1 and species 2 is n2 so if you go with n1 so what we get intrinsic growth rate r individual rate n1 because we are calculating the growth rate of species 1 so it will be r n1 in the bracket it begins with k minus n1 okay that is till this value we have the similarity with the logistic growth but now we will see minus we have another value here another parameter that is the impact of one species on another and in this case what we will see we are trying to calculate the growth rate of species 1 so the impact that we will calculate will be the impact of species 2 on 1 so we will get the value of alpha 12 so alpha 12 into the total number of individual present in species 2 that is n2 divided by k so what we get here is this value right so remember till this point the value is same like the logistic group only these two portions are different this equation is only different why because we are calculating the growth of species 1 so what we want to calculate here the impact of species 2 on 1 and that impact will be further if the number of species 2 is more so we need to also take account for the total number of individuals present in species 2 so multiply it with n2 that's how we get the formula to calculate the growth of species 1 in presence of species 2 okay similarly we can do that for another one for species 2 now dn by dt equals to r n2 then carrying capacity minus n2 minus here we are calculating the growth of species 2 so growth of species 2 means we want to check the impact of species 1 on 2 so that is alpha 21 into the total number of individual of species 1 divided by k so this is going to give you <coughs> the growth of species 2 so what we see now in both this case we are able to calculating either the growth of species 1 or the growth of species 2 
correctly involving the idea of lotka voltera model so in reality always the competition is present in many cases in the wild if you look there is competition intra specific competition inter specific competition all around it they are present so in reality we always need to take account for this lotka voltera model to calculate the growth rate of one species in presence of the other now this is only one part of lotka voltera model now the question is i told you at the beginning between the competition of two species can you predict the outcome of the competition the answer says yes with lotka voltera model we can achieve that too now the question is how can you achieve that idea whether between species 1 and 2 who is going to win and who is going to lose to get the idea about that we need to construct a graph using the value of the n1 and n2 and also calculating the carrying capacity of both species 1 and species 2 in presence of the opponent species that's going to give us a graph and with the help of that graph looking at the pattern of the graph we can calculate between species 1 and 2 who is going to win and who is going to lose okay so let's look at it uh, i i have those graphs in my computer so i'll go back to my computer to show you how do you calculate that outcome okay so now as we know about the lotka voltera model here we will see how to predict the outcome of a competition involving the idea of lotka voltera to understand that you need to know this graph as i mentioned you earlier that in this graph we have n1 in the x axis and n2 in the y axis n1 is the number of individual to start with for species 1 and n2 is the initial number of population size or initial number of individuals in the population for species 2 now <clears throat> i also told you earlier regarding the value for k which is carrying capacity and we know carrying capacity can be calculated based on the total number of individuals supported by the resources provided by the environment so carrying capacity should be the maximum number of individuals supported in this case which is also depicted in y axis now the thing is while we are calculating the carrying capacity or k2 that is the carrying capacity of species 2 we need to take account the presence of species 1 or the number of individuals present in species 1 this is one thing and the second thing is the alpha 12 that is the impact of species 2 on 1 in this case normally we need alpha 21 in which is the impact of species 1 on species 2 so while we are calculating the carrying capacity of species 2 or k2 we want to calculate for the number of individuals of species 1 and the impact of species 1 on species 2 both of those things matter and also alpha 12 that is the amount of impact of provided by species 2 on species 1 so now if alpha 21 is greater than alpha 12 then what will happen that means the impact of species 1 and 2 is far greater the impact of species 2 and 1 so in that case the carrying capacity value will be less if the initial number of individual of species 1 is high is that clear so n1 is high and the value for alpha 21 is greater than alpha 12 that means 2 will lose right one will win that is the idea okay now the similar thing if value for alpha 12 is greater than alpha 21 and number of individual present initial number of individuals in species 1 is less that means far less impact provided by species 1 on species 2 so normally the impact provided by species 2 on 1 is high so the carrying capacity or the k2 value will reach maximum in that case k2 will be high and species 2 will win this is how we can calculate whether species 1 will win or species 2 win will so now let's look at here in the two three separate graphs of how we are calculating it in this first graph what we are seeing 
is a calculation of parallel graphs for both species 2 and species 1. The graph with black color is a species 2 and the growth pattern of species 2 and the green one is for the growth pattern of species 1. What we are seeing here is that the value for alpha and the value for alpha 21 and value for alpha 12, right? So here as we see the value of k1 by alpha 12, another one is k2 by alpha 21. Now just imagine if the value for alpha 21 greater than alpha 12, then what will happen? This value will go less and the value k1 by alpha 12 will increase. So what we will see? As a result, we will see the carrying capacity for one species one will increase here. This will be the carrying capacity of species one, which is increased due to low alpha 12. But as alpha 21 is high, the carrying capacity for species two is decreased. So you see, if we now calculate the carrying capacity for alpha uh, for species one is this length and the carrying capacity for species 2 is only this length. So as we see carrying capacity of 1 is further increased of carrying capacity of 2 that means we know with the same resources more species 1 can live and the environment can support more k1. So environment is favoring species number 1. So in this case species 1 wins and that's the beauty of this graph because in all this graph the one will win for which the isocline value or the graph will be on top. In this case we see the value for species 1 graph is on top of species 2 graph that is why we see species 1 is winning. In the second situation here you will see that the graph for species 2 is on top then species 1. Now again if we calculate it here value for k12 by alpha 21 and k1 by alpha 12. Now what we are seeing here alpha 12 is more than alpha 21. So in this case the value for k2 is going to be more than compared to the value for k1. If you look at here the value for k2 that is the carrying capacity of species 2 is far more compared to the carrying capacity of species 1 which is only this. So as k2 is much more than k1, we know k2 is going to win that is the species number 2 is going to win, right? And again based on that same idea that in this case we see the isocline of species 2 on top so that is going to win. So as we know these graphs can be placed in a way in every single case the one who will come on top the isocline for which species will get on top is going to be the one who will win. Now there is a third situation where due to the alteration of the value for alpha 12 or alpha 21, the idea behind the values of k1 and k2 is not well understood where both these isoclines intersect each other in a point. Now they can move in either of this direction. In this case, if you will calculate the k1 and k2, you will see not much difference is present between the two. So in this type of situations, as the alpha 12 and alpha 21 is kind of similar, then we cannot predict for sure that whether species 1 will win or species 2 will win. So in this type of graphs where they are intersecting each other in a point, we can say either species 1 or species 2 can win because both have the capability of winning. That is how we predict lotkan volterra model and with the help of lotkan volterra model, we can predict the predator-prey relationship. We can say whether species 1 is going to be predator or species 2, okay. So now as we know about the Lotka Volterra model and as I am making this video keeping in mind that this question asked from uh, this region in, in CSR net exam, I, I put two separate uh, questions so that you get to know what kind of questions they generally ask from here. 
here you will see the first question it says you have to match column 1 with column 2 okay now if you look at here in the column 1 there are nothing but different equations provided and if you look at here in this video we already talked about three of those equations already we talked about this equation this and this in this particular video itself so as you know three out of four equations from this video I think you can solve this question quite easily it says dn1 by dt equals r1n1 this we know is a graph for exponential growth so it will match with 4 then this one while we involve carrying capacity but no competitive competition coefficient that is going to give us the idea about logistic growth so calculate this logistic growth with column 2 that is will be option 2 and then the third one here we are looking the growth of species 1 in the presence of competitive species 2 right so here you see population growth of prey species 1 in the presence of predator species 2 population growth of species 1 in presence of competing species 2 now it says predator species or competing species 2 with the help of this particular formula we cannot predict whether species 1 or species 2 is going to be a predator or prey we simply know that species 1 and species 2 are in competition it can be predator prey or may not we don't know exactly who is predator and who is prey so it's the best way to select competing species so option 1 from there so while we tag with remember we're tagging here with a a with 2 b with 4 and c with 1 so based on a b c d what we can put 2 4 1 and 3 so 2 4 1 and 3 is the option a that is going to be the correct one because d will be tagged with 3 because it's what remaining here okay that's how you can answer to predict whether the competitors are predator or prey we need to look at the graph otherwise we cannot tell it for the second problem here you will see two species in competition and the growth for both the species are given and it says where n represents population size r growth rate and k maximum carrying capacity of species 1 and 2 the interspecific competition coefficient alpha 12 is less than 1 the value of alpha 12 less than 1 signifies the impact of species 2 on 1 is comparatively less compared to the impact of species 1 and 2 so in this case it is telling you alpha 12 is greater than alpha 21 so either they tell you like alpha 21 is greater than alpha 12 or they says alpha 12 is less than 1 or alpha 21 is greater than 1 they all mean the same thing so here which among the following is the correct option individuals of species 2 have less inhibiting effect of individual of species 1 than individual of species 1 on other of their own species that sounds quite of correct because individual of species 2 impact on species 1 will be less compared to 1 on 2 second one individuals of species 2 have greater inhibiting effect on individual of species 1 that's not going to be the truth individuals of species 1 have less inhibiting effect on individual member of species 2 we cannot predict it exactly from here individual species 1 have greater inhibiting effect on individual of species 2 than species 2 on 1 that thing can be an option but compared to option a and d we can tell based on the idea provided is alpha 12 value and alpha 12 means competition coefficient exerted by species 2 on species 1 and what we can tell is that individual of species 2 have less inhibiting effect on individual of species 1 so what we can tell option A is more appropriate to correct okay so that in a sense are the type of questions that we're going to get in the exams okay so as you see now once you understand the process once you understand the concept of Lotka Volterra model answering these questions from the previous year net exam becomes really really easy so if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that 
and as you see if you have difficulties understanding a topic just let me know i will make a video on that thank you